All right, welcome back to Cytochrome P450. Um, we're going to talk in this video about how Cytochrome P450 receives the electrons that it uses to activate molecular oxygen and ultimately add uh, hydroxyl groups to different molecules. And the, this electron transfer requires one of two auxiliary enzymes. And it depends on which system you're talking about, but in general in mammalian systems, P450 systems, they do require that extra enzyme. And so we're going to see a series of electron transfers, and this is called the cytochrome P450 electron transport chain. All right, so what we're going to see is electrons in any case, as you can see in both these situations up here, um, the electrons are going to come from NADPH. All right, and the NADPH is going to come into one of the enzymes and transfer its electrons to it, and it's initially going to transfer it to an FAD. But let's look individually at each one. The top one listed as A here. This is one of the electron transport chains for P450, but this is the one that tends to exist in the mitochondria. This system is called the adrenodoxin reductase system. All right. So this enzyme over here, it says Fe red. Okay, that basically means adrenodoxin reductase. All right, this protein right here, the small one that comes in contact with adrenodoxin reductase, is adrenodoxin, which is similar to ferrodoxin. Okay, so what's going to happen is NADPH is going to transfer its electrons to an FAD coenzyme of adrenodoxin reductase, and then. Adrenodoxin reductase with those electrons in the FAD is going to transfer those electrons one at a time to adrenodoxin. Okay, it's going to transfer them to adrenodoxin, which is an iron sulfur protein. Okay, so this little square here with the two dots that's an iron sulfur center. So the electrons one at a time go from FAD to the iron sulfur center, and then whenever that iron sulfur center of adrenodoxin gets the electron, it then moves over to the P450 and then transfers that electron to the heme iron that's in the P450. Okay? Now that the adrenodoxin has delivered the one electron to the heme of P450, it then goes back over to adrenodoxin reductase where it then gets the second electron from FAD and goes back over to P450 and delivers that electron. Now remember, NADPH transfers electrons in the form of a hydride anion. So when FAD picks up the electrons from NADPH, it's getting two electrons. So that's why we talk about one electron going to the P450, it comes back, and then it gets the second electron. Okay? So the NADPH to FAD is, is, is one transfer of two electrons, whereas from FAD to the iron sulfur center of adrenodoxin and then ultimately to the heme, that's two transfers of one electron each. So the second step is one at a time. But in any case, that's how the heme iron of P450 over here gets its electrons. Okay? It requires adrenodoxin reductase in the mitochondria. Generally, all of them in the mitochondria are going to use adrenodoxin reductase. However, if we're talking about a P450 where most of them are, which is the smooth endoplasmic reticulum, it's going to use a different electron transfer system. This POR right here, what that means is P450 oxidoreductase, although normally people refer to this enzyme as cytochrome P450 reductase or just P450 reductase. The initial step is going to be the same. NADPH is going to transfer two electrons in one step to FAD. Now, the FAD this time does not require anything like adrenodoxin. The P450 reductase has another flavin, and that's FMN. It turns out that FAD, one at a time, is going to transfer electrons to FMN. And then that electron from FMN is then going to be transferred to the heme iron of this P450. Okay. So in other words, when we're talking about a P450 reductase system, which is usually microsomal, or we say in the smooth endoplasmic reticulum, the electrons flow from NADPH to FAD to FMN and then to the heme iron of P450. If we're talking about the mitochondrial system, we're talking about electrons flowing from NADPH to FAD, then to the iron sulfur center of adrenodoxin, and then to the heme iron of P450. Okay. So it just depends on where in the cell you are. Now we're going to see in a later video that there are different uh, systems that use different ones. For example, the cholesterol side chain cleavage enzyme, which is the first step in steroid synthesis, notice is red, it's mitochondrial. So this enzyme is going to use the adrenodoxin system. 
just like 11 beta hydroxylase and aldosterone synthase. Okay, those are both going to use the adrenodoxin system. Generally, all the smooth endoplasmic reticulum microsomal systems, those are going to use the P450 reductase system. And not all of these are P450s. For example, all the dehydrogenases, 17 beta hydroxysterone dehydrogenase and 5 alpha reductase, those are not P450s. But the P450s in the microsomal system are going to utilize the cytochrome P450 reductase system. Okay, so these are just two ways that electrons are transferred, but remember, no matter how or where NADPH delivers electrons, it's always two in one fell swoop. Flavins, in this case, they're all going to transfer electrons one at a time, and then the iron sulfur center of adrenodoxin is going to transfer those electrons one at a time. And once the electrons go to the heme iron, then we can sort of take a look at the P450 catalytic cycle. All right, thanks for watching this video, and make sure to like it and subscribe. And in the next video, we're going to go over the catalytic cycle of cytochrome P450 enzymes. Thanks for watching.